Hi guys, Raynal here, and today we're talking about Farish, who's coming to our Divisions on Wednesday. Uh, he seems like a very interesting character to me. He's a magic scaling swordsman, just like Elena, uh, but instead of being an evasion character in a hyper damage carry, he's more of a magical bruiser. He's designed to be able to take a couple hits from an enemy, Elena, enemy, Black Rose Elena, or more, or etc., while being able to do significant damage back. And then, depending on the subject you use, you can have more variety in your damage type, or uh, the access to some healing and full life. So. Overall, pretty good. Uh, we'll take a look at his stats, his abilities, how to build him, and in which game modes he'll be relevant. Let me begin by saying that Varush, while he is a very interesting character, is not a meta-defining character. He is not a must-pull for anybody. I think he's good, and if you want him, you will find ways to make him shine, especially against magic-oriented teams. Uh, but don't feel bad or any FOMO regarding him. It's not necessary at all to have him. Uh, one main limitation he will have is his short range. Uh, he's got only a four square range uh, on his main job, which isn't that high. And then he has the starting AP of a physical attacker at 18%. So he's not starting like Elena with a half his AP bar full or like a mage, uh, which is a severe hindrance. I usually think if it's a magic scaling character, they should have really high starting AP. That's not the case for him. Uh, then if you look at his master ability, you can immediately tell that he's designed to survive a couple hits, he's got extra spirit and HP uh, for himself, and then he's buffing wind units, he is a wind unit himself. And then his TMR to me is not that interesting. It has good stats, HP, defense, and spirit is really cool, uh, but then the buff is really mostly useless, and we are in an era where there's a lot of TMRs with really top tier buffs that you use and define your team. And so because of that, if the buff is useless on a piece of gear, I usually just store it somewhere and never use that. That's probably what will happen with this one. Now, let's look at his stats, and we're going to compare him with Elena because they're both magic-oriented slash attackers, and with Moore because they're both mage hunters in their own way. And immediately, if we look at Varush, he has more HP and spirit than any of those characters uh, from the get-go, which is really good. Uh, but then his magic is a little bit subpar compared to Elena, and slightly below Moore. He also has less luck than any of those, so you can expect him to not be evady at all, and not have the greatest accuracy either. That is a little bit of an issue for me. Uh, he's got base move, they all have that kind of movement, and then you look at his starting AP and you realize that yeah, he clearly does not have the starting AP of a red mage or even any other kind of mage, it's the standard 18%. Uh, he is weak to ice, that's to be expected, he's a wind unit, uh, and strong against earth. And then his resistances, he's got really good slash resistance, and the others are kind of middle of the pack. In terms of status effect resistances, he's only really resistant to slow and berserk, which aren't all that important uh, in the current meta. If he had resistance to stop or charm, I would value those a lot higher, same for disable. So not top tier there either. Uh, his magic at 523, even if it's lower than the other ones on screen though, is in the top tier uh, damage category, so he will be able to do significant damage while having a decent amount of bulk. If we look at the way his stats move from 99 to 120, I think you could stay at 120 and then save yourself 3 Blossoms, and he would still be a good character. Uh, at 3300 HP, he still has more than Starlet Elena, so you know he can work without that extra HP. And then he only loses out on 30 magic or so, so he's still going to hit pretty hard. At 492 magic, he has more than some other magical damage carries, which is very acceptable. And then you're not missing out on any spirit, you're not missing out on any agility, so these are very important stats that you will still have even at 115. Now let's take a look at his support abilities, and it's a really tough choice for me. If I was building him specifically as a bruiser, I would equip both the passives that give him spirit, so that you have an extra 24 spirit, and you're able to build him into a really good bruiser. It's what I like to do with more, and she works very well like that. Otherwise, if you want him to be more of an attacker, you could swap one of those two for uh, Agility Up and Spirit Penetration, which I think is really useful, especially against magic tanks. Or if you're not expecting to run into anybody with Spirit, just go with the extra magic up and your extra damage will be significantly higher. So they're all good options, but it really depends how you want to tailor him. And then Encounters. I would probably not use the first counter. His new job counter seems really good on paper, right? 30% chance to proc is as much as a unbond, so all the time. Uh, 121 mud is good, and then the damage increases as his HP decreases. The drawback? 
It's single range. You have to have the enemy right in front of you to use it. No one in War of the Visions attack from directly in front of you right now, unless it's a basic attack to finish you off. And so it's never going to proc. Because of that, you would probably equip the Kododama counter, which has a chance to decrease damage taken by 30%, and that's what I would equip on him all the time. His limit burst is actually really good. 4 square range, 200% mods, 67 chance to para paralyze, which basically takes somebody out of the fight for 3 turns. It seems really good, but then you remember that this guy has 0 starting AP, and so with a 43 cost limit break, unless he has Vels, he's never going to use that, or he'll use that first and then be out of AP for the rest of the fight. So it's a really difficult to use, but if you do place it, it's very strong. Looking at the Swordsman's main job, there's two things that I find really interesting about it. First one, all of the attacks have some kind of other bonus on top, either debuffing the enemy or buffing himself, which is interesting and fun. And then it's a crit-oriented job, so it has some extra eff effects on crit in a couple ways, and that's something I find fun. Uh, I don't like crits for damage in War of the Visions, because the crit damage isn't all that good in terms of a stat, but when there's added effects on a crit, that's a nice way to put a tweak to a character that's different from what we've seen before. And so, he, his first attack, Magic Knife, is a height 2 attack. It's his only one in his kit, but at least he has one. So he has a way to reach for somebody who's slightly higher or slightly lower than he is. It deals 121 mud and then decreases attack and magic. Cool. Then he has an AoE buff that increases slash attack for everybody, and for himself increases crit rate and spirit. We were talking about spirit being one of his strong suits, allowing him to tank magical attacks for a long while, and that's exactly what this skill does. So it's pretty cool, and then it also increases damage, gives him some synergy with other slash attackers. It's his only non-selfish buff. So outside of that move, all he does is attack enemies or buff himself. So yeah, not a very team-oriented character. Uh, then he's got an attack that deals significant damage at 200 mod and restores CT for himself by one quarter of a turn, so that's pretty good. Then he has an ability that gives him a 3500 HP barrier and regen. It's the first time we see a flat HP barrier, and I would say, are these barriers good? It really depends on how much bulk your character has. So somebody like him with a lot of spirit, who's likely going to take chip damage from magical attacks, will benefit from a flat HP barrier a lot. If he was squishy to attacks and was going to take 9000 damage from a hit, then I would say go for a 50% barrier and you would be better served. But in his case, I think it's really good. Also, the fact that the barrier takes uh, the damage before his HP does means you will not trigger any healing job uh, reaction, so he won't try to heal himself or somebody else will not have to heal him because he'll still be at full HP, it's just the barrier that's taking damage. So, seems pretty interesting. Then he has the standard cross shape attack uh, that has some decent extra hit chance, but he has sh really terrible luck, so I don't know how reliable he'll be even with that extra 30%, which also decreases counter chance. So that's fun, we've had a lot of characters with that ability lately. And his final ability is a line shaped attack that heals him for a portion of the damage done, which I like. So overall, a very versatile job that we've never seen before. I don't know how strong it is, but it's interesting and new, so that's something. Then if you're using the Swordsman's sub job, you gain access to a new move that deals low damage in a cross shape, while also removing buffs and haste if you crit, which is pretty fun. Uh, it has a 5 square range, which is better than anything else in his kit, but the thing is, the uh, his other sub jobs are very important to him, and I don't think you'll use this a lot. Uh, the other move is also pretty niche, but very fun. It has uh, significant damage while decreasing bravery by 40 for 3 turns. If you were to chain that on somebody, you could conceivably transform them into a chicken and just negate them from the fight for a couple turns, which I think is really funny. If we get many swordsman job characters in the future, we could just use them all in a raid and just reduce a boss's uh, bravery to zero and just have a lot of fun. Uh, but uh, by himself, I don't think this move is enough to warrant using it instead of the other sub jobs. Talking of other sub jobs, Kododama. There are two main things that you want out of this sub job. The first thing is the extra move and jump. Without that, he's as immobile as a unit can get in War of the Visions. And then you gain magical type attacks, so you're not forced only with slashing moves. If you've noticed, in Barush's kit, there is no slash resistance penetration, so if he's fighting somebody with high slash resistance, he cannot do real damage to them. And so having the Kotonama sub job allows him for a different damage type, which will be very important. He also gets access to a 100% hit chance, and since his accuracy will be pretty low, uh, he needs that to be able to reliably hit some people. So there are a couple good reasons to run this. 
But then, White Mage is also pretty fun, because if you want him to have more of a supportive role, being able to do damage and tank magical attacks, but also heal back, a White Mage is also really good. He has access to, you know, Curata, a couple good things, Protect, Shell, and Izuna, but mainly Full Life, which is a super strong move, brings somebody back for the entire fight. Uh, so, it's a really tough choice. If I was playing him manually, I would not know what to do. The mobility is key, but then again, full life is so good that it can change a fight by itself. So, yeah, you probably will never equip the other sub job because these two compete for the top slot in my opinion. Now, if we're looking at a sample build, I think this guy has really good bulk. 6k HP, 37 spirit, and 45% slash resistance, and we're not going all in on any of those right now. We could equip another spirit up passive to get more, we could uh, equip a spirit up esper like Freezes to give him even more spirit and go way above 70 in spirit, or, you know, we could swap the Esper for Siren, give him over 70 slash resistance. Depending on what you want to do with this guy, there are many ways to make him survive for a long time while keeping his magic over 1000, so that's pretty interesting. And then his agility at 96 is fairly fast. I do think you either want Bells or maybe Summer Killface TMR, something that can give him decent survivability and a lot of AP, because he will be AP hungry, he has very low starting AP. And then good partners for him, I think, are other slash attackers, especially those that can chain. Somebody like Elena is going to do a super good job, especially if Barish is equipped with a white mage sub job. You probably want other partners with high faith so that you can heal them reliably or have a really high chance of pulling off a full life. So I like that high faith partner for him. Uh, Cloud's also a really good partner. He's got slash resistance down, which is key if your uh, Varush is not a Kodorama sub job, and also has crit affinity. So he's going to give AP restore and crit. Varush should crit basically all the time. So that's pretty fun. Uh, otherwise, Halloween the Lila, also high faith, can heal Varush back if he takes damage through his barriers so that he stays healthy, and then they can both chain using wind moves potentially. So that seems like a good combination. And naturally, he should avoid enemy ice characters. That's going to be very tough matchups for him. Uh, he would do. Uh, he would have a very hard time against uh, Sweetheart Salir. You might be thinking, but she's a mage. Yeah, but he's an ice unit with high faith. Uh, Valentin Salir is going to blow through his uh, defenses and kill him in two hits, and he's going to need uh, several to be able to kill her back. So I think that's going to be a rough matchup. And then Freyevia, especially with her barriers, he has no way to deal with those. And then she can have good slash and magic resistances, so she will completely shut him down. She is basically built to destroy this character. Uh, I would also avoid King Mond. King Mond has a really bad tendency to disable you. Yes, Varish has Berserk resistance, but King Mond loves using uh, Fang of Leonis and just destroying you early in the fight, and since Varish has a high faith, he is quite likely to not be able to keep on fighting. So there's a lot of bad matchups for him, but there's also really good partners to synergize with. With all that said, uh, there are a couple obstacles to using this guy really well. He's got low starting HP, he's got short range, uh, and it's really tough to pick a sub job for him. He also does not seem to have super good synergy with the windy girls like Tibi and uh, Tifa because he just doesn't have the luck to dodge properly or even hit properly against other evasion units. Uh, but he has good sets. He can tank will take magical attacks really well while fighting back, he can pierce spirit, he's got utility on all his offensive moves, so I see him as more of an offensive support that's going to do significant damage while taking some heat off of your other guys. Will he carry your team by himself? No, but that's not really his role. Uh, looking at it by game mode, PvE? 4 out of 10, you don't really need a character that doesn't have super large AoEs, doesn't have a lot of starting AP, doesn't have the mobility to get around the map, I feel like there's usually going to be better choices than him. For Arena, a good 6 out of 10. He will shine if you find the right opponent and place him right, because he is really strong at what he does, it's just that what he does is very limited, he can only fight certain types of characters. Uh, Guild Battle, again, if you can fight the right enemy team, he would do well, uh, but there's a lot of hybrid teams, and all the teams are basically hyper damage carries, so I don't know that the amount of spirit he has and barriers he has will be enough to survive. Also, Black Rose Helena has a Barrier Breaker, Spirit Down moves, it's impossible to survive her for a very long time, so while he might take two hits before going down and die on the third, he will eventually die to them. So I don't think he uh, deserves much more than a 5 out of 10 in a meta where she's in 3 quarters of the teams. Uh, manual PvP, a solid 4 out of 10, uh, can't move around the map 
doesn't have a long range will die to lightning gunners. That's basically my feeling about him. Uh, Odo PvP, he might do a lot better because there's AI, there's hate, there's a lot of things you can do. And if you can keep the heat away, like have a tank next to him while he advances, he can full life your tank and then when he gets the enemy team, deal significant damage. So just like Arena, if you can arrange your AI really well in your early turns, I think he could do well. So 6 out of 10 there. Overall, I recommend that unless you're a really big fan of this guy and you want to make him work, you like the new job, you don't necessarily go for him. I think he is good, but he's not as good as the other cost 90s that we've gotten in a while. And so that feels a little bit weird to me. I would probably build him if I pulled him naturally at some point, but I would not spend this chasing him right now. Uh, so that's my plan, at least. Uh, hopefully you guys found this interesting, learned a thing or two. If you did, please like and subscribe. And then as per usual, thank you so much for watching, guys, and have a great rest of your day.